Can you believe they let me up here? <laughs> All right, guys, today on the Daily BA, we have a guest. Whew, here we go. So I have no clue what all those people are doing in line, but we are at the California Association for Behavior Analysis um, event, so we're gonna capitalize that in interview. All right, check it out. It is Tyra. Welcome, thank you so much. Um, so we're at the California Association Behavior Analysis, uh, what do they call it, the Western Regional Conference? Yes, sir. Yeah, it's huge, like 2,600 people. That's right. Um, it's been a blast. and. Uh, recently, I had met Tyra through the uh, Why We Do We Do podcast that we run, and she, she jumped on uh, to help us talk about just supervision in a very general kind of lay yeah. language sort of way. So ideally, it's consumable for anyone, but we want to dive into the details here of specifically supervision when we're talking about um, behavior analysis and like our entire uh, field, right? right? And a little bit more of a technical way, or at least in a more specific way for behavior analysts and what's going on. So. How did you stumble across the field? Everyone's got a cool story usually of like, here's how I got into it. Yeah, uh, so I, I'm fairly comfortable being a disappointment, which I will be now as well, because I don't really have a cool story. Uh, I just was always involved with individuals with special needs from mm -hmm. the time I was a kid. So tutoring peers, um, in-home respite care, and yeah. then eventually ended up working for a large a private school, a non-public school here in California. Okay. Um, worked there for about nine years and that's kind of how I got hooked in. Um, and I tried real hard to sort of get out of the field. Um, I went to law school. That's right. And thought I would yeah. become uh, a lawyer and do special ed advocacy. Um, but I hated law school and um, lo loved behavior analysis. And more importantly, really loved the people that I have always been able to work with. So I work really hard. I work, you know, 40 to 80 hours a week, like mm -hmm. most of us. And if I'm going to be working that hard, I don't want to be around people that I wouldn't want to hang out with outside of work. Yeah. And that's how law school was. I, those are people I would never be like, you know what? It's Saturday. I want to hang out with those people. Uh, but all my SPED folks, yeah. all my ABA folks, um, definitely were like that. So yeah. I stuck it out. And, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So just kind of kept coming back around to like behavior analysis is the thing I need to kind of doing yeah so it like I always worked personal sense yeah, yeah I always worked in the field even when I was going to law school right? okay so I was still oh. working at yeah. the non-public school um, and you know back in the day in the 90s uh, it was not as obvious. <laughs> is that back in the day now yeah that's back in the day. <laughs> because like music I grew up with in the 80s by the way um, is oldies now right so yeah. like that's a thing yeah so okay. it wasn't so <laughs> clear that there was a career path in behavior analysis yeah it, the field was really really new mm -hmm. um, there was not insurance mandate everywhere there weren't ABA providers on every corner yeah uh, so it took me a while to figure out that I actually could have a viable career um, so yeah I just okay. I stuck it out because I love it okay so. let's get into supervision yep. um, so there's uh, what there was a a series done in behavior analysis, uh, behavior analysts in practice yes. in 2016. You were a part of that. Um, these changes from the BACB and such came yeah. in. They're relatively new. So I want to get into why is uh, supervision kind of like one of your one of your topics, one of those passion points for you in the field. Yeah. Okay. Um, probably because I sucked at it <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> early on. Um, I think because maybe like many um, people that are watching this and people in the field. Uh, you jumped right into supervision as soon as you could um, mm -hmm. without really understanding the importance that it plays in our field, the impact that it has in our field forever. So it's not just yeah. like, mm, I ran a crappy imitation program for that kid. This is like what we do will impact the field, yeah. future behavior analysts as well as clients, mm -hmm. consumers, forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I jumped right into it. I probably was really bad at it. Yeah. I don't like to be bad at anything. And if I'm, if I'm bad at something, I won't do it. Yeah. But I, I kind of, you know, you don't have to be a supervisor if you're a behavior analyst, but I knew the path that I was going to take mm -hmm. because I really love that training aspect mm -hmm. was going to include supervision. So I had to get good at it mm -hmm. because I knew I wanted to keep doing it. Okay. That's why I'm passionate yeah. about it because it's, it's critical and because I sucked at it. Yeah, that makes sense. Personally, I got more interested in just like system analyses, yeah. OBM and those things because I realized the same thing like, oh, you can have a larger potential impact yeah. if you can maintain your integrity, if you're going to go through those ways. And I actually graduated straight into a supervision role myself. Yep. Um, and the, you know, I had mentors around me and there were some things that kind of helped out there. But uh, it was one of those things that I was kind of expected to do in that role, uh -huh. um, or I definitely was expected to do in that role. 
and I had about 20% of my time that was allocated there um, formally. Um, but I realized that I, uh, it just took a, took a while, but I realized this is not a thing that I am good at yeah. in the sense of, um, like I didn't feel like I was maintaining enough integrity on what should be getting taught and how the process would go. Sometimes sometimes I feel like I didn't quite have uh, the right resources necessary okay. to pull it off sometimes and like there was other external factors that sure, I would- I was competing contingencies. Yeah, yeah, that I was pointing at, <laughs> yeah. um, which I probably shouldn't have been pointing at and it was more me. So sure. um, yeah, I kind of did the thing that you talked about and I was just like, I'm gonna be kind of done with this in that <laughs> sense. Um, and I, I, I can kind of lead and work with a group in a team format. Sure. And we can kind of collectively work together. I will speak up when I know what's going on and I feel okay. comfortable about it. And I, I think it'll lead to these same outcomes and I feel like it's coherent and solid yeah. and consistent with the field. But uh, supervision is not that. Like I had to be able to talk about all the things, yeah. right? Um, okay, so what are some, some uh, points maybe for, that are being talked about a lot? Consistently yeah. everywhere. Um, well, before we jump straight to that, I would okay. just like to say, as a behavior analyst, um, I thank you for being self-reflective yeah. about that. So you're like the yin to my yang, right? Like I wasn't good at it, but I was super motivated to get good at it. Uh -huh. You were like, mm, I'm not good at this, but I'm good at these other things. I'm going to put my focus here, yeah. and that's awesome. And that's okay. exactly what our yeah. field needs to do. And to the, <laughs> we've talked about this, but the, the, to the like. Uh, 12 or 13 people that I was responsible for at that time, like yes, I'm sorry. I apologize. I apologize. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I have not done that for about a year and a half now. <laughs> yeah. I think. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so, so that's the first thing, yeah. which I think also ties into your question about what are some of the common themes or questions or points. Again, yeah. The first main thing is for um, behavior analysts to understand the importance that supervision plays in our field. It's mm -hmm. not just uh, a hoop to jump through to sit for your exam. Um, and it's not just another job responsibility in your mm -hmm. job description. Yeah. Um, it is literally the way our field is shaped. Um, you get content knowledge through your coursework and then you mm -hmm. get additional content knowledge and skills yeah. um, and practical shaping through your field work experience or your practical experience that's supervised. So what that means is people with their PhDs who are teaching they know that's their role, but I think our field didn't, it was sort of like, surprise, now you have to be a supervisor and here yeah. are the rules. But uh, just like a paraprofessional in a classroom has the same or more responsibility than the teacher, because yeah. they're the one yeah. contacting those learners all the time. Mm -hmm. um, supervisors, BCBA supervisors, mm -hmm. have just as much, if not more, responsibility and are just as important, if not more, than mm -hmm. professors, because I teach the stuff out of the books, and I'm also a supervisor, but mm -hmm. you know, many professors aren't also supervisors, mm -hmm. but supervisors have to do all of the nitty gritty skill stuff and then all of the other stuff that yeah. isn't really specified, right? Yeah. Interpersonal skills, organization, time mm -hmm. management, prioritization, mm -hmm. all the stuff that's hard to measure. It's hard to give feedback on, mm -hmm. sometimes really hard to affect change. Mm -hmm. um, so we think that's probably one of the most important things is for everybody to just take a breath and realize okay. if you're supervising, that's a super, super crazy important role in our field because you're shaping forever. Each person yeah. you supervise is then going to supervise more people mm -hmm. and then more people. And we can either be a really bad infection <laughs> or we can be like a really fantastic, amazing infection that spreads better and better and better supervisors forever. Yeah. So then the second point okay. is it's not about checking off, can you do a preference assessment? Can okay. you run an FA? Mm -hmm. um, it's about really choosing, if I'm supervising you, mm -hmm. we're choosing this collaborative, mutually beneficial relationship where I should expect my behavior to get shaped mm -hmm. because I want to become always a better supervisor. Mm -hmm. um, I think being a great supervisor is a value, not a goal. It's not something I ever want to say, like, check that off, I'm done, I'm a good supervisor. It's something I should always be working towards, yeah, right? Yeah, I like that. Yes, um, perfect. So it's oh, not yeah. about just checking off competencies, right? Yeah. Um, it's about really teaching you how to become a good supervisor. Okay. And I'm using all of the knowledge and skills as a means to establish those skills. So I want you to be a great BCBA, mm -hmm. but I also want you to be a great BCBA supervisor to make mm -hmm. other great BCBAs yeah. and other great supervisors. So what, okay, I love that. What are some things that maybe uh, reflecting you were like, hey, I wasn't doing this, but now I'm doing this and it's a lot better. Like what were some of those areas? So maybe if someone were to like, say, okay, uh, maybe I should do some self-reflecting, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, what are some things that you kind of 
yeah. some tools, tips, you know? Yep. So there are a couple of things that I learned from my mentor, Linda LeBlanc, who okay. I um, am incredibly lucky yeah. <laughs> to have worked closely with. That's, very, that's cool. Um, she does something that's very, very natural that I think some people feel really uncomfortable when you think about it. Mm -hmm. But when I would have a meeting with her, she would always in some way weave in sort of like a... Like, so how's this going? Okay. Are you getting what okay. you need from me? Yeah. And it was always really natural and okay. really genuine. And it made me think like, damn, she really <laughs> cares yeah. about, it's not just me coming to the altar of behavior analytic knowledge and receiving. Like yeah. she wants to know what she can do better. It was bi-directional. Yeah. yeah. And like this Linda LeBlanc, right? <laughs> like that was pretty amazing. Yeah. And yeah. Um, at the same time, like, hu like humbling. Like yeah. we all should be doing that. So yeah. I added that into all of my supervisory practices. Okay. Um, I always try to say at some point, you know, are you getting what you need? Yeah. Can I do something better? Yeah. Can I do more or less of something? Mm -hmm. um, also, I think that was one of the things that I struggled with was like, um, kind of getting better at it now, yeah. but it was kind of like, uh, you're exposing yourself at that point in this thing that's kind of, pers or is very much like a hierarchical yeah. relation, right? Um, but you're kind of exposing yourself of having to, to get that feedback and it's it's tough. But when you yes. do it, it's like so rewarding, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. It, I, and I think the idea is the supervisor and the supervisee both need to be cognizant of the fact that the point of the relationship is for both of them to get better. Yeah. For the supervisor to become a better supervisor mm -hmm. and for the supervisee to become a better behavior analyst. Yeah. Um, and that's really the point. And so yeah. if we approach it from that perspective, I should want that feedback. Uh -huh. I think it's foreign for a lot of people. Okay. It didn't feel awkward to me. And I feel like I always developed relationships where I kind of got feedback, but uh -huh. I never really just purposefully added that in okay. as an activity in every meeting. Okay. And that was really huge to do that because you would see people kind of just, you know, the first couple of times they're kind of like, no, huh? Everything's yeah. great. But, you know, when you do that enough, yeah. by the third or fourth meeting, they're like, yeah, well, you know, like you talk really fast. Um, can, is it okay if I ask you to slow down every mm -hmm. once in a while? Or, you know, you talk really fast. Sometimes it's hard for me to visualize. Is it okay if I ask you to demonstrate? Yeah. Or, right? Or yeah. can we role play more? Uh -huh. um, or, you know, when you're assigning me articles, <laughs> can you not assign me like five at once? Right? Yeah. And so, like, that's important for me to know. Yeah, and yeah. That, those are easy things I can And you fix. can adjust that, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I like how at, at the end of the day, it's really just both people using what we've been taught in our field, too, of just kind of database yeah. decision making and, like, it yes. gives you that. Yeah, cool. Yeah. And that's the second most important thing that I changed is okay. to be a good behavior analyst in my supervisory practice. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean teach good behavior analytic skills around the, the technical aspects of our science. Yeah. I mean use it in the interpersonal relationship as a yeah. supervisor. So okay. be mindful, be purposeful about what I'm working on and why. Mm -hmm. um, use multiple exemplar training. Right? How, yeah. can I, <laughs> how can I work professionalism and ethics and technical skills and knowledge into every task that okay. we're working on? Doesn't matter if it's selecting the right measurement procedure or how to operationally yeah. define a problem behavior or uh, standard acceleration charts. You know, the idea is to be purposeful and planful and to have some way to measure mm -hmm. if I'm making the change that I mm -hmm. should be making for that individual, but also to measure the effects of my supervisory yeah. activities, which I have to do per the BACD anyway. Yeah. So how, how can I capture not only am I teaching the skill sets um, that I need to uh -huh including things like professionalism and yeah. communication skills, but also um, is it socially valid, right? Yeah. So like I need feedback mm -hmm. and not just like the, hey, how am I doing? But you know, like a formal anonymous feedback yeah. system, yeah. so. Cool. Yeah. Is there, so one last question that came to mind was, um, our field is very much in this emerging market. There's a lot of things going on yeah. right, since, you know, uh, 1990 up until now, like well, just yeah. all over the place. Um, are other fields experiencing this? Is there other fields you're kind of learning from um, or looking at when you kind of look at the research or the literature? You know what I mean? Like, what else is influencing you? Is it just that you're looking at the practices within our market and field, or do you go to other, so other leaders and in other industries that are also provided cool models or? Yeah. Well, I mean, this one isn't exploding, but I definitely go to Dale Carnegie's book okay. in terms of trying to understand how to do better with 
yeah. um, interpersonal skills and yeah. that kind of thing, and right? That's, that's how to win friends and, and influence, influence people, people yep. right? It's an okay. oldie but a goodie. Yeah. So I go to the field of um, psychology a lot Okay. to look at things that our field just hasn't yeah. been great. At. So like, I'm not concerned about supervisors being good at teaching the technical skills. We know we use behavioral skills training. We know how to mm -hmm. measure if you you know, had good procedural yeah. integrity, mm -hmm. you can take IOA. Mm -hmm. I'm worried about those other skill sets. So I okay. go to... Um, other like, non-traditional sources. The things, yeah, yeah. I guess, the things outside of our field, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, some things kind of adjacent to our field, right? Okay. So like a yeah. lot of okay. acceptance and commitment. Yeah. Um, stuff is important to me. I love the idea of values versus goals yeah, yeah. and behaving towards those values. Yeah. Um, I go to the OBM literature a lot, which is okay. adjacent or yeah. within, depending yeah. on who you are. Um, I like that systems approach that you were talking okay. about. Yeah. And I try to think about my supervision in that systems yeah. level. So I have uh, you know, things that I want my performer to do and I want yeah. them to do it within a system. Uh -huh. um, and there are certain procedures and processes that I want them to use. Yeah. Um, and then some of the business stuff, right? Okay. So just yeah. keeping an eye on, here's the thing. I think a lot of, I think a lot of business articles now are speaking in usable language, but they're using behavior analytic principles. Okay. Talking about building positive cultures in the workplace. Okay. Um, talking about giving your employees more control, right? Yeah. So I read that as how do I create EOs uh -huh. to get more uh, independent responding yeah. from my supervisees. And uh -huh. so I think some of the business stuff okay. is pretty great. Yeah, dig it. I, I did an episode, um, I don't remember exactly which one it was, but it was just kind of uh, Dr. Steve Hayes. Yeah. Uh, I caught him at a conference at a boot camp in Orlando 2013. Caught him afterwards and I was asking a lot of questions. And uh, he, he's, he said, and I know he says it other places, but he was just like, uh, psych it was like psychology, psychology asks great questions. We may not like look at it, we all look at it differently in these different fields, sure. even like the subfields sure. like you're talking about in our, in our um, the, the, would you say, even the, the adjacent yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, folks in our field. Um, but regardless if you disagree with that sort of stuff, they're still asking interesting questions right. and we can look at it through our own lens. Absolutely. And so that's beautiful, yeah. yeah. Um, I agree with the, the business aspect too. It's something you can start to like look and pull from. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I kind of try to take the tact of um, there's probably value in all of the other fields. It's mm -hmm. just how do we how do we translate it yeah. um, to be useful for us. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. yeah, and that could maybe be a way to build bridges in the future as well. Like yes. you start to learn. Yeah. One thing I've learned is as I learn more in other fields, I can now use a little bit of their terms, mm -hmm. right? And have conversations with them. Yeah. Yeah, and start building those bridges. Okay, cool. I think that's it. Okay. Anything else? Awesome. No, I'm yeah, good. I love this. Okay. okay. I will make sure to link, uh, what is it, the, the 2016 Supervision One? Yeah, um, Behavior Analysis and Practice. There yeah. are like eight articles. There's okay. another great article you should link to. It's not mine. Yeah. It's by Gar Garza and colleagues. Okay. Um, 2018. Okay. Behavior Analysis Ooh, and Practice. That's fresh. Super yeah. fresh, okay. fantastic, um, like additional resources that you yeah. can you can even access those right now if you can't if you don't subscribe and you can't get the journal article yeah. you can get those supplemental. Okay. And you can also email the authors and get this really fantastic tool for a okay. supervisee to self evaluate ah. and then you check their self evaluation. So you get two cool things: you get okay. to actually evaluate their skills. And you get to evaluate how accurate of a self-reporter they are. Okay. Because I might be like, oh, yeah, I'm really good at that. And then yeah. you check it, and I'm actually not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's good information. To yeah, yeah. Well. Okay. So you should definitely link to that article. Okay, yes, I will. Cool. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so, yeah, those are linked below. Uh, the cool thing is those things just live forever down here. So if we ever need to update, yeah, they're there. All right, thank you. Check those out below. I appreciate your time. Yes. And as this kind of saying goes here, that's your daily BA.